so I'm putting my pistons together, putting the rings in. Um, I'm actually on the last one now, but I got all my rings. I got my marked bag for cylinder number eight. Just do a double check. That's what it is. I keep the, I've been keeping the pistons in these gallons of black bags, but basically got them all on and I put them back into the bags actually, as you can see them there, but I don't know how far I'm going to make it tonight on it, but hopefully I'll start getting a couple of them in, but realistically I don't think I'm going to stay up late enough to get them all in yet tonight, come back out tomorrow, but the way I've been finding, which is weird, I was struggling really hard to get this oil ring in, um, well to get the middle one in after I got the two top and bottom ones in. Stupid as it sounds, I put the middle one in first and then the top, the bottom and then the top and it goes 10 times easier. So I've been doing that and you know I can still get the gap spaced out on it so that you're not just an open portage for the oil to get up and then I got these fancy $15 ring expander pliers. Way better than doing it with your thumbs. I've tried a couple just to see how it works and it sucks but just a simple pair of pliers it's really cheap it goes really well basically here start at the bottom and it just pops in here I got my gap so now I'm going at least an inch on either side of it starting with the bottom ring Maybe. And these I'm just kind of bending around, but the depression rings. I see this one now I'm putting right in there and spinning it around. The compression rings I'm using the pliers on these, I'm just spinning in just like that. Now for me, my second ring has a dot on it. Probably doesn't show up on the camera, but it's right there. That goes to the top of the piston. And I'm even gapping these gaps away from the oil gaps. Probably don't need to, but I am. Put the two compression ring gaps away from each other too. And just like that, I have my piston rings on and put them back in my bag which is soaked with oil. And that's it. Alrighty, so I have most of the pistons in. Missing the front two still, so I uh, was kind of go, going over how I'm going to go about that. Uh, first step, you put the piston that you're looking at, so for me this is cylinder number one, and then you take that, see I have this fancy turner on the end of the crankshaft, but the bolt for the harmonic balancer will work too, or you can even come back on the uh, back of the crankshaft and turn it like that too, but basically well, the rod at the bottom of the stroke or at least really close to it so that's where I put that that's good there and the reason you do that <coughs> is that when you put the piston in and you're putting it in the top of the bore your rod isn't actually going on the shaft not yet you want to carefully be guiding that down as you do that. All right, trying to get this all set up so I can do it one-handed, but so I got my piston out, got my cap off. Now, I know I already applied assembly lube to the crank, but I'm just, I don't know, extra precautious, I guess. Just a thin layer. I got way too much on my finger. Go on to the rod bearing there, watch it. Just like that, just let's cover everything. And here, this is a piece of 3 8 hose. This works great. Stick this right over the rod bolts. And honestly, it's almost a little bit big. 
which is perfect. So it kind of, as you're going down onto the crank, this just guides it right in. It's a soft surface to to guide on versus the, the bolts there. So it guides right in place. <clears throat> and then I got this fancy ring compressor from Summit Racing uh, from 4 to 4.06 bore. Basically for a small block Chevy 350. But line that up under there. Grab your piston. Now, the piston should be installed. It's going to have a dot on it. Try to point this dot right there. That always goes towards the front. You see I did that on the other three cylinders also. But you just drop this in. See, this is where those hoses come into play. It helps just guide it right into place. And for me, <clears throat> the piston skirt should just bear, sorry, just barely be in the block right there. And it is, so that way I know it's lined up. So then, you can see I'm not anywhere close to touching the shaft when I have to beat this down into the cylinder. So, not beat it down, tap it down, but then just compress these rings. It takes a little bit of work, almost usually two hands, but maybe I'll get lucky here. There's one. There's two. Okay, so now this next part is gonna be a two hand job for sure. Take one hand, I'm gonna hold the ring compressor down onto the block, because if this pops up, a ring can get out and be between, right on the top of the bore here. And you start hitting that down, then you might break your ring. But what I'm using to hit this down, I got this hammer, it's got a rubber handle on it, and hit it just like this, really lightly. It goes down just a little bit at a time. If you go too fast, you might break something. Just take your time, go slow, and beat it down and nice and nice and easy like. But yeah, just gonna just like that. Okay, so now I'm just barely past the top of the bore here, come down underneath. I got these rubber hoses that are just kind of hanging there, not touching the crank. Now, one thing I did forget to mention is that you need to oil, put some oil in the bore here to kind of help guide it in. Now, I kind of did that ahead of time. I have all the pistons stored in a Ziploc bag and I have them in a little bit of oil here. So they are oil soaked, they have oil on them already for me, so I don't have to oil it. But basically I could just give it a couple squirts there and just rub it around just to make sure I'm not scratching it on the way down. But now I'm gonna come in here and with one hand underneath guiding and the other hand just tapping this down in and she should go. Looking good. We're all the way down. These rings are going to hold it well enough that I can turn this over. Next thing, I'm going to put a little bit of lube on the cap here and throw that on. Alright, got my cap lubed up. Now, there is a right and wrong way to install these. Of course, it's tough to handle, but basically, you see that little tab on that side? And there's not one on this side. So, um, let's pick out an easy cylinder. This right here, you see the tab goes towards the outside. So, see the tab there? It's on the outside. So, not rod to rod. The tab does not go next to the rod. The tab nut goes next to the crank. So, just give that a little tap. 
gold. Now I'm gonna tighten them up, uh, kind of hand tight to start with. Cheating, cheatingly hand tight. But you see, I'm not cranking on this at all. It's just wrist strength, basically. So just kind of getting them both to an equal stage of tightness where. You can see the caps are seated next to each other because you don't want to ratchet. You shouldn't ratchet with your torque wrench. It's not what it's designed for. It's designed to measure a torque. Now, these rod bolts here, small block Chevy, they're stock. It's 30, sorry, 45 foot pounds. Next thing I like to do, after each cylinder, go on the end here, I got a ratchet, it works great. Just turn it over. And this is important just to make sure that you didn't make a stopping point, let's say, for it. Um, nothing's gonna be a hard intersection. If you do this cylinder by cylinder, you'll find out exactly where it is easier versus doing it all and then have an awkward realization. Give it a full rotation, and if that works, yeah, I get my next cylinder pretty close, and I'm satisfied with the turning the torque. Now, obviously, as I keep going, putting more of these in, it takes more and more force to turn it over. But all right, got all my pistons in. Call the short block. Well, minus the camshaft, if you count that. Assembled. Um, my next step, obviously, is the camshaft. I know some people put it, like to put it in first. Um, for me, it's easier, I guess, or it doesn't matter. But I'll put it in after I get the pistons in. So put the camshaft in, check the uh, degreeing on that, make sure that's right. And after that, then we'll uh, get one of the heads on and get measured for push rods.